Welcome to LifeWords Day by Day, where we've been studying 1 Samuel 14. And in the last scene of 1 Samuel 14, we see self-exaltation and Saul wanting to pursue and plunder the Philistines by night. And we see self-righteousness in Saul when the priest comes to him and he says, you think we should ask God about this? And Saul says, of course, I was just about to do that. But we're also going to see self-preservation. So Saul inquires of God. He asks God, if we do this, will we be victorious? And there is no answer, only silence. So Saul assumes, rightly, that there must be some kind of breach in the relationship between Israel and Israel's God. So he calls all the people together, and he's going to use the high priest's special stones to show them who has caused this breach. And so he says, all of you stand on that side, and me and my son will stand on this side, and whoever is chosen, even if it be my son, that person shall die. So they go through this process, and the lot falls to Jonathan. Jonathan is identified as the guilty party, the one who sinned. And so the question is, did God speak through these stones that the high priest would use? Well, think about this for a moment. In this particular scene, God's presence is nowhere mentioned. And just prior to this, at the corrupt high priest request, God is silent towards Saul. And then earlier in chapter 14, Saul cut short a religious ceremony asking for God's blessing and all of this going on while the high priest is of a cursed line. Could it be not that God identified Jonathan as the guilty party, because God was not manifesting his presence to Saul, but that Saul was simply trying to avoid the blame, even if the blame had to fall on his own son. He was trying to save his own skin, his own reputation. He cared not that he was out of fellowship with God and refused to offer any kind of repentance to get back into the presence of God. Saul was the bus driver, willing to throw and run over his own son to preserve himself. This is what we call self-preservation. So we've seen self-exaltation, self-righteousness, and self-preservation. So let us be reminded that this king, King Saul, is exactly the type of king Israel asked for, a king like the other nations. And may we learn the lesson that what God desires for us and provides to us in King Jesus is far greater than we could ever ask for or imagine. As you pray today, please remember Michael and Sharon Quilman, our missionaries in Zambia. And also remember the Bond Day LifeWord broadcast that's heard throughout Tanzania.